Welcome to the Eye of the Storm, sponsored by Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center and the Florida Division of Emergency Management. In this video, we will learn how science museums prepare for hurricanes and the role they play in teaching hurricane science in their community. And we will learn how the Florida Division of Emergency Management prepares the state for hurricane season. So we are thrilled today on Eye of the Storm to be meeting with Julia Bland, who is the CEO of the absolutely stunning Louisiana Children's Museum in New Orleans. So good morning, Julia. Good morning, Joe. Thank you for having me. What does preparing for hurricane season look like at the Louisiana Children's Museum? Well, every year at the end of May or early June, we have a staff preparedness training um, and we really talk about what our, our protocol is for an approaching storm that has, whether there's something in the Gulf or something that is approaching the Gulf, whether it has a name or not, um, we go through the protocol of how we are to operate, what we need to do for the facility and now grounds. Our new museum is on eight and a half acres and so there are a lot more details to take care of here this Eye of the Storm series is going to introduce people to so many careers uh, related to hurricane preparedness, uh, from being a hurricane hunter to being a children's museum CEO. We know that the visitors today, the, the seven-year-olds, the, the 10-year-olds, are gonna be the problem solvers of tomorrow. So for them to have been to our museums and learned about water management or learned about approaching hurricanes, learned about the science and engineering of how nature works and how mankind responds to the ravages of nature, we know will be beneficial in the years ahead as we learn to manage uh, the many conditions that, that our, our continent, our, our climate, our planet um, withstands. When disaster strikes, the news coverage is generally by and for adults. Rarely is the story told by children. The museum wanted to hear the voices of our youngest citizens, children of New Orleans and the surrounding communities. It was hard. It was hard to pick up and just even evacuate because you, if you don't have the means, like you can't, you don't necessarily, you might not have a car. Pretty much lost almost everything, a house, family members, all, even though even though we uh, lost everything, we still try to uh, pick, pick ourselves back up way after Katrina. You know, we might lose some items and, you know, material things, but as long as we still have our lives, you know, we should be grateful for what we have and how we've made it through. We're continuing conversations with science museums around the country who are doing some amazing things in the world, not just of hurricanes, but in formal education and extreme weather. And with us today, we have uh, Dr. Jeremy Hoffman, Chief Scientist at the Science Museum of Virginia. So uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thanks so much for having me. Weather, particularly hurricanes, um, huge opportunity for us as science museums to have conversations with the public and uh, engage them. Would you maybe talk about some of the work that uh, you've been doing in that arena? The biggest thing that I think we were able to accomplish was what, what was known as our Preparathon event. And then I think that has really shown um, not only the, the public, but the emergency managers themselves to give a face to the public that they're dealing with. And I think that's a lot of the feedback that we got from people was like really breaking down these kind of institutional barriers that, you know, uh, defamiliarize people with one another and really put like a personal face on uh, the emergency management community as well as the public. Being a chief scientist at a science museum is uh, about uh, as STEM as you can get. So. What, what does your job look like? So really, the chief scientist is about figuring out how everything connects among digital, in-person experiences and just big ideas about what the Science Museum is all about. And I, I really, really enjoy my job and think it's one of the best ways to combine 
uh, desire to have an impact on the public while also getting to use the scientific things that I've learned throughout my entire life. The transition in the museum world certainly came from a desire to connect my enthusiasm for what I was learning through my research back to the public. And I think as scientists develop through uh, this upcoming generation of scientists, it's going to be much more of a, a kind of commonplace thing to connect the public to your work, uh, where it wasn't so much when I was going through my PhD. But basically saying yes to every opportunity that I had to explain why I was excited about science to a random person, either at OMSI or at the farmer's market or at the library, I took it. And I think that that's really what separated uh, you know, a research career from now what I'm doing as the chief scientist at the Science Museum of Virginia. Uh, Dr. Hoffman, it's been absolutely uh, lovely having you with us on Eye of the Storm and to all of our viewers who are anywhere uh, near Richmond, Virginia, definitely go visit the Science Museum. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, I'm meteorologist Eric Salna, uh, Associate Director with the International Hurricane Research Center and the Extreme Events Institute at Florida International University in Miami. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Kevin Guthrie. He's the Deputy Director of the Florida Division of Emergency Management. They have a big role to play when it comes to hurricane preparedness and the hurricane season. But first and foremost, uh, we'd like to say thank you, Kevin, for your time. And thank you so much uh, for you and the Florida Division of Emergency Management and being a partner in this virtual Eye of the Storm education series. Very much appreciated, Kevin. You're, you're welcome, Eric, and thank you for having us on. We look forward to this all the time, so thank you for having us. Florida Division of Emergency Management, it, uh, it has a big role uh, in general when we move into a hurricane season in terms of the role that it plays for the community and the state. Yeah, yes, we do. I mean, the first and foremost, uh, you know, a lot of people look at us as a response agency, but really we're a preparedness agency first. It all starts with preparedness. So um, we, we do have a big uh, preparedness campaign that we uh, push off every year uh, on getting a plan for how to uh, make yourself ready for hurricane season. Um, and then once we are prepared, and you know that's what we've been doing over the last couple of months here uh, within the Florida Division of Emergency Management, and we are moving forward with um, our response mode now. So we're doing contingency planning, we're uh, always looking at the uh, the next thing that's coming along off the coast of Africa or off the Yucatan Peninsula, seeing how that might affect us, um, whether it's a tropical storm or whether it's a hurricane, cat one through four or five. What are your key messages for all residents uh, moving into this hurricane season and preparedness? I think right now what we're focusing on more than anything else is uh, for the second or third season, we're continuing to message that uh, individuals need to have five to seven days worth of supplies. We're continuing to see more and more powerful storms, uh, you know, of the category five hurricanes that have hit the United States. Three of them have been right here in Florida. Uh, when, they, when they're more catastrophic, they're more devastating. It just takes responders a little bit longer to get into those remote areas to get those individuals back online. The single best thing that you can do for your household every year is to start your plan with stop, the top number one thing is an insurance checkup. You know, many, many times uh, Floridians and homeowners, they, they sign their original homeowner's policy and then they never go back and revisit it. And it's, and it's in effect for 20, 30 years. Um, that needs to be an every year, every other year item to make sure that you have enough coverage on your home to cover your home. If it rains at your home and it and you you have natural flooding problems and you're in the and the water's cascading around your home, you need flood insurance. So we are rolling out a program now and we'll continue to roll out and build on the program of know your home and know your zone. What we want individuals to know is what zone do you live in, right? What is your actual zone? Am I in that cat if I am I in evacuation zone A? my evacuation zone E, what does that mean? When you when we call for, and local emergency managers call for that evacuation zone, we want you to evacuate, right? Uh, it is important. That means that there are life-threatening situations and storm surge that could occur in your area that could result in, uh, again, loss of life, loss of property, significant injury. So when that's called for, you need to evacuate. If you are an individual that, um, needs uh, dialysis, you need oxygen, you need electricity to live, 
um, and you have, you know, you're under a doctor's care, you're under a nurse's care, um, please contact your local emergency management agency and get pre-registered for special needs with them. That's very, very important. It's right underneath insurance is probably the, the second best thing that you can do in your preparedness kit is actually get pre-registered and let your county know where you're at and that you need special services. So what about hazards after the hurricane? Yeah, ab absolutely, Eric. I mean, you know, it, it's sad that um, I, I was here for Hurricane uh, Michael here in our State Emergency Operations Center. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna loosely say that about 40 to 50% of the deaths that were attributed to Hurricane Michael were actually deaths after landfall, after Hurricane Michael left. We had individuals that were um, had kickbacks on chainsaws. We had individuals that were electrocuted, but individuals that had trees fall on the top of them. And, you know, it truly is, you know, those are preventable deaths. And, you know, we, we've got to get better in the future about uh, safety after the storm. There's absolutely no reason anybody should be going up on a roof, up and doing anything with those trees, working around cable lines or or power lines that might be down inside of that debris, you know, stay out of that. It's just not worth your life. Doors, windows, garage doors, roof. Uh, what would be your uh, suggestions when we talk about mitigation? If we could just keep the roof on the house, the, the survivability of that house goes up exponentially. So think about mitigation for that. It doesn't take a lot of money to put extra roof straps on your home. You know, get somebody to come in and inspect those roof straps, roofs, windows, and then elevation. Uh, elevation is much more difficult, but uh, roofs and windows, uh, look at your old windows. Can you replace them out with some type of impact resistant material? Can you put shutters over the top of them? Um, you know, the old adage uh, of putting tape over your windows uh, doesn't necessarily do anything for your windows. <laughs> in fact, I think you and I would agree it does nothing for your windows. Well, tied in with mitigation is uh, the research that's being done with the uh, Wall of Wind at Florida International University. And uh, Kevin, uh, doing research and mitigation and this whole issue of uh, building better, building stronger, very important. And it's a great partnership with FIU and uh, the state of Florida and the Florida Division of Emergency Management. Yeah, it, it truly is, Eric. And I, I will tell you, uh, you know, from what I've seen on it, it I think a lot of people forget what wind, how damaging wind can be, right? Uh, they just don't understand the effects of wind, and again, you know, just how catastrophic that can be. And the wall of wind that certainly helps people understand what happens as that wind continues to build and build and build and build. And I mean, uh, it gives real-time research and real-time data for building officials and those that build homes um, information on how they can build better homes to make sure that they stand up against the winds in the future. So yeah, what you guys are doing in conjunction with our with our partnership down at FIU is, is truly incredible and uh, keep up the good work on that. Again, we have Kevin Guthrie and he's the Deputy Director with the Florida Division of Emergency Management. And uh, Kevin, we really do uh, appreciate your time and appreciate uh, this partnership and your support on making this all possible this virtual Eye of the Storm Hurricane Education Series to educate Florida residents and beyond. We can't say thank you enough for your support in this project uh, so much, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're, you're extremely welcome, and we look forward to the continued partnership between us and FIU and your office. Thank you so much. Eye of the Storm is sponsored by the Florida Division of Emergency Management and Florida International University's International Hurricane Research Center which is a Weather Ready Nation ambassador. For more information, visit weather.gov forward slash WRN and stay informed all season long with the Museum of Discovery and Science.